senior day at West Virginia this year is unusually tough as some of the most popular Mountaineers ever will say goodbye today. The Kansas Jayhawks hope to spoil the party and to avoid another winless Big 12 season. Bowser College football from Morgantown is now. to Morgantown, West Virginia for Fox College Football. Today, it's the final regular season game of the year for the Kansas Jayhawks and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is Brian Baldinger. West Virginia became bowl eligible for the 11th straight year last week with an exciting victory over Iowa State. Now the Mountaineer fans want to honor 21 seniors playing their final home game. And two in particular came in together to Morgantown in 2009, Geno Smith and Tavon Austin. And if you haven't seen these two guys play, they're two of the best players in all college football. And quite frankly, if they weren't just six and five right now, they'd be talking about both of these players for a Heisman Trophy candidate. Uh, Geno Smith can do it all at quarterback. And Tavon Austin, for my money, the most exciting player in all college football. Watch him running the ball today, returning it, and catching it just as well. And for Kansas, they do it in a different way. I mean, you look at James Sims and Tony Pearson. James Sims leads the Big 12 in rushing. Tough inside runner. Tony Pearson, big time playmaker on the outside and also in the receiving game. So Kansas wants to play keep away today. They want to pound the rock here in Morgantown. Should be two different ways of trying to get a win. Hey, you averaging 216 yards per game on the ground. It's the last game for 23 Jayhawk seniors and the last home game for 21 Mountaineers. It's KU and West Virginia next. Let's go, West Virginia! Fox College Football is presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. And in outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. 21 Mountaineers are playing their final game at Milan Fishkar Stadium. Most are young men who will be playing in their fourth straight bowl game. Let's now go to Jim Knox. Behind me, Geno Smith saying a last-minute prayer before he gets out on the field. A very emotional day for the West Virginia quarterback. You see what? This is his final game here in Morgantown, and he wants to go out in a big way. He's got a lot of family and friends in from Miami. So big that Stedman Bailey, a good friend of his from Miami who came here to play wide receiver, told me before the game that we're going to send Gino out in a huge way. And I say, what is that, Stedman? What huge way can you do? He said, we're going to get him the record. Nine touchdown passes for Gino today. That's what Stedman says. We'll see what happens. To see. He had eight earlier this year in that brilliant performance <laughs> against Baylor, and his biggest fan is his coach, Dana Holgerson. Last year, the first year coach of the year, winning 10 games and blowing out Clemson in the Orange Bowl, but he lost a lot of defensive talent to graduation, and moving to the Big 12 has been tough. Same story for that man, Charlie Weiss, moving from Notre Dame to talent depleted KU. But he was the national coach of the year at Notre Dame, a brilliant assistant in the NFL. And he knows he'll need a lot of defense to stop that man, Tavon Austin, who has been sensational this year. One of the rare players in college football history, the only Mountaineer, as a matter of fact, in West Virginia history to score a touchdown four different ways. And uh, football brought out past the 30-yard line. J.D. Woods on the return, just seven yards. As we take a look at Geno Smith, the talented senior, playing in his final game in this stadium. He is out of Miami, Florida. Well, the scouts are drooling about him, and rightfully so, because he's got all the tools. But for Geno Smith today, this is about his farewell to Morgantown, which I think has treated him well. He's been a star. Uh, he's been one of the best players to ever play here. I think he just wants to go out and have a great game and a great final memory. He has a tailback in Sean Alston, who's coming off his best game of the year. Instead, Smith is going deep first play. Stedman Bailey makes the catch. First down inside the 25. Well, these two came out of Miramar High School in Miami, Florida, four years ago together. This is just a straight post. 
and he's working on the outside against Ja'Cory Shepard. He gets inside, and, you know, these two, Stedman Bailey and Tavon Austin, we're probably going to talk about them a whole lot today, and probably <laughs> for a good reason, Steve. 46 yards in the first play. He will send Austin in motion. They will run the football up the middle, and a solid gain of three, four yards as Austin with his first carry and today's Academy Sports Right Stuff player is that young man Stedman Bailey. He is now four catches shy of 100. And yeah, that number 21 touchdowns though, that will catch your eye. 21 touchdowns right now in 11 games this year. On second down, Smith to throw. Has plenty of time, wings it to the right, and it is a first down at the 11-yard line to J.D. Woods. Woods' 53rd catch, and a pass of eight from Smith to Woods. That last play, Steve, Geno Smith just went. He read the hitch to the corner route, then came all the way across the field to complete it down at the bottom. I mean, he's got great vision, and he's got real quickness of decision-making. Austin in the slot right side. Here he comes. And they give the ball instead to Sean Austin, and he slams his way ahead to the five-yard line with a tackle is made by senior safety Lubbock Smith. Well, Austin is 236 pounds, and he came off his best game of the season last week in that much-needed win against Iowa State where he had 130 yards in that game. He just gives them a big back that they haven't had because of his injury. He had that thigh bruise. They will run the middle again, and slamming forward is Austin down near the goal line. They say he is marked right at the one. Jordan to buy on the tackle, and there is a Jayhawk down. It looks like Lubbock Smith, the Lubbock senior Smith from safety. Dallas. Yeah. Playing his final game for Kansas. You mentioned 23 seniors for Kansas as well. And you never want to have this happen in your last college football game. Two weeks ago, Iowa State spoiled KU's senior night in a 51-23 victory. Yeah. And Lubbock Smith got torched by Sam Richardson. Iowa State would then play West Virginia at home in Ames. And uh, West Virginia beat Iowa State 31-24 to break a five-game losing streak. Yeah, and for Charlie Weiss, he's had two weeks to get ready for this game. He said the first week, they basically had to rebuild their psyche after that disappointing loss to Iowa State. And then the past week, they've really game-planned heavily here for West Virginia, trying to break a lot of dubious streaks for Kansas football right now. Well, Kansas has been solid in the red zone. Opponents scoring just 75% of the time. But on the other side of that coin, Geno Smith is 14 for 15 on goal to go this year. So warning Jayhawk defense. Well, they got their fullback in the game right now, Ryan Clark. So they got a lead back in the game right now. Kind of lead block for uh, Sean Alston, who's back here. This is a good offensive line in Quentin Spain, Josh Jenkins, Joe Madsen, Jeff Braun, and Curtis Fight from left tackle to right tackle. Alston hammers ahead. He is short of the goal line, just barely. And it will be third and inches for Sean Alston, the senior playing in his final game. On the same play. And picked up. Yeah, Geno Smith fumbled a snap that time. He never got it cleanly from Madsen. Madsen making it a 49th start here. Watch this. I think he's going to be a quarterback sneak. And really, he never got the ball clean. And Tunde Bakari read it and got to him very quickly. So now, well, here's Bailey with a whole lot of room to the outside to work right now. Eighth play of the drive. They sweep left. They will score the touchdown. Andrew Bowie. Quite an efficient opening drive there for West Virginia. All led by that man, Geno Smith, starting the first play to Stedman Bailey. Getting them uh, 48 yards that opening post route. Tyler Bittencourt, 
for the point after it. He has had opportunities to do this. This will be his 57th extra point attempt, and he's now made 55, and West Virginia just moves right down the field. Stedman Bailey uh, started it with a 46-yard grab from his quarterback, Geno Smith. They hooked up for the 96th time this year. West Virginia takes an early 7-0 lead on Andrew Bowie's dash. Geno Smith started with a bomb to his buddy, Stedman Bailey, and then his running back finished it off. Andrew Bowie, an eight-play, 68-yard drive that took 246 off the clock. And how about this, Brian? West Virginia has scored exactly the same number of points they have given up this year. It's not a good sign. It, it's Tate is off. This is working, and the defense isn't working. And that's been the story of the season. Here is the kickoff. It will be Tony Pearson going to one knee, and KU will have the football at their own 25-yard line. Let's go to Jim Knox. All right, Steve, right behind me, Lubbock Smith, just getting up from the training table, number one. He came out with a knee injury. He was on the table, and on his left knee, what they did is they put a knee brace on. Behind the bench, he was running up and down a couple times, trying to get used to it. Looks like he's going to be okay, and he'll be back in, guys. That was a young man who was a freshman All-American with 42 tackles his first year, and he and a guy like Tanner Hawkinson, who we just saw broke the huddle, they started out their careers 5-0, and oh, and then it's been all kinds of trouble since. Dane Chris will make his first start since the Oklahoma State game back in October. Here's Chris going downfield and deep, incomplete, intended for Jamey Mundine. <laughs> And he is our Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff player. I think it's a little bit of a surprise, I think, for West Virginia. A lot of people that Dane Chris is back in the starting lineup, but he's he's played well recently. Uh, really struggled with his accuracy, only 48% on the season. Uh, in the first half of the season, they made the switch to Michael Cummings. But uh, Charlie really feels like he's practiced well and played well the last couple of weeks, and he deserved the shot. He was a high school All-American coming out of Notre Dame High School in Southern California. They try the middle with James Sims, and much like he has done this year, carrying would-be tacklers for about four or five yards, it is Rowell with the uh, tackle. And here's what their offense has done, Brian. 216.6 yards per game. A lot of people said that wouldn't take place with a Charlie Weiss head coach. Well, he's just playing to their strengths. I mean, they just don't have talented wide receivers. The quarterbacks you know, can't complete 50% of their passes. And if you're going to win a college football, you're a quarterback, and you've got to throw the ball, especially in the Big 12. Third and five. He goes to Kale Pick who catches the football and then is blasted by Nick Kiwakasi. That sure looked like that was a hit to the head, too. Akil Pick knew he was going to get blasted. That's why he sticks his hands out and tries to protect himself from that blast, knocking the ball loose. And Kiwakoski is seeing more action later. Now here is Tavon Austin, a brilliant return artist. Yeah. Ron Doherty averages a little more than 40 yards per boot, but he wants to keep it away from Austin, who's back near his 20. They kick it out of bounds, a wise decision. There is wisdom in that. Geno Smith. And the Mountaineer Air Raid. This young man has thrown for 37 touchdown passes this year. We'll see more of Geno when we come back. West Virginia has the early 7-0 lead. Now they have the football back, but Jim Knox wants to talk about an injured Jayhawk. Pick, Steve, just came to the bench, and the couple of the trainers came on top of him. He still has his helmet on. Neck. Everything seems to be okay. He still has his helmet on. He keeps shaking his head. You see in the game. Right now, they're going to the concussion test. And Kale Pick has been one of their better wide receivers this year. 25 catches for 380 yards. Now they will run. Austin, look at him take off. Man, he has incredible wiggle ability. <laughs> he's smiling. I know he's smiling there. 
This ability to stop and start is like nobody else in college football. Coming across there, a little handoff underneath. All right, here goes. Whoop. <laughs> there is nobody else that has feet like that in the entire landscape of college football. Austin now goes in motion to the bottom of your screen. They'll run the football to Sean Austin, who breaks a tackle, gets the first down, and about eight more. Well, they got it going inside and outside right now. I mean, Austin is a bruiser inside right here. Just going to cut it right inside. Nice little gap here. Look at that hole. I mean, just bounced it right off his uh, left guard, Josh Jen. And uh, Bowie, uh, Austin coming off his best game of the year last week against Iowa State. Picking right up where he left off. They missed him badly when he was out. They tried the middle again, and this is Andrew Bowie, who is more of a speed back at 5 feet 9, 188. Austin is their power back at 5'11", 236. Yeah, and, and Dana Halgerson told us, he goes, you know, the position we need going forward is we're okay at quarterback. We'll replace Geno. We need wide receivers and running backs. That's what we're going to lose. And that's what they're out trying to recruit heavily right now. Particularly in the junior college ranks, we understand. Look at him escape outside, and Austin will be cut down. This is a fine defensive play by Ben Heaney, the sophomore linebacker from Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, you know, Tavon Austin, you know, about three weeks ago, ran for 344 yards against the University of Oklahoma. And I've never, right here on this field, and I've never seen anybody do that to Oklahoma in my life. And really, this coach said we should have played him more at running back than we have this year. Didn't think he could hold up the way he did, but the guy is so durable. Now on third and nine, Geno Smith is two for two thus far for 53 yards. Kansas with the blitz, gets in his face. He fires downfield, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Tyler Patman. Only the sixth time this year that Geno has been intercepted. Well, I think it, yeah, I think it was started with the pressure of really moving Geno Smith off his spot and then kind of throwing a little late over the middle. And Tyler Patman right in the middle of the field. The happy recipient, the 20th takeaway for this Kansas Jayhawk defense this year. He saw his friend Bailey for a moment, and then Patman stepped in for the pick. We're back in Morgantown with the Mountaineers up 7-0, but I want to show you a play here, the interception of Geno Smith, but really this is on the wide receiver, Stedman Bailey. Bailey is right in the middle right here. Now, he does never come back for the football. I mean, he's got to come back to the ball right now, and he doesn't. He's got to come back and help out his quarterback by just sitting there and allow Patman to come in and really take that ball away. That's on the receiver, not the quarterback. This is Dane Christ's second opportunity on the first play. He threw the football downfield. On this first play, he runs the ball to James Sims. And right in the middle is Terrence Garvin, one of the top tacklers on West Virginia's side. That was his 67th stop this year, making it second down and 10. Yeah, and if I was West Virginia, I would just load up to stop the run. I would make Dane Christ in this passing offense, an offense that doesn't have a receiver with a touchdown catch yet. I'd load up and stop the run and let him try to beat me with the pass. Damon Patterson goes motion for a moment, stays in the left side. Chris in trouble, stays on his feet, wings it downfield. It is caught for a first down inside the 20-yard line by Andrew Terzilli. Well, this is just a scramble drill. And when Dane Chris gets flushed out of the pocket, one receiver goes deep. Here's Dane Chris getting flushed now. One receiver goes deep and one comes short, and Terzilli went deep, turned it up, just kind of threw it up there. Now, Terzilli's a big big target at 6'4". There's the scramble drill. You practice this. I don't know if he stepped out of bounds or not, but he was awfully close to the white stripe. Makes it all the way down to the 16-yard line. We were told they would play Andrew Moore when Chris was in the game. Now a flag goes down, and it looks to go against the offense. Offense, number 84, five-yard penalty. First down. That is Mike DeFee, the head referee. And Charlie Weiss told us earlier this week that West Virginia is not worried about the Jayhawks passing game. They've been averaging 151 yards through the air, 216 on the ground. But West Virginia didn't know Chris would be starting. 
Uh, I mean, you know, Charlie has a different game plan every single week. He's had two weeks to get ready for this game, and he likes the way that Dane Christ has been throwing the ball in practice and in the games the last couple of weeks. Play action to Sims. Another flag goes flying. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. First and 20 doesn't help, but they are facing a defense that really has been challenged this year. West Virginia allowing almost 41 points per game. That ranks 117th. They are dead last in college football yeah. defending the pass. Well, it doesn't matter if your offense is just backing up right now. I mean, right now, Kansas, two plays in a row, just lost 10 yards of penalties. A short run. Gain of about five for James Sims, so it'll be second down and almost 15. Look, Kansas has lost 10 games in a row. They haven't had a win in this conference since 2009. For Charlie Weiss, I mean, every single play that you've ever drawn up in your life on the back, on the back of every pizza box has got to be up this week. I mean, <laughs> you've got to be ready for anything right now if you're West Virginia. Are you going thin and crispy or the thick and chewy? Well, I like the deep dish myself. Okay. I, I like to feel like it's a meal, not just a snack. <laughs> Sizemore in the game. Blocking, pass downfield, incomplete. Third down. It was intended for Damon Patterson. Good coverage on it. Good coverage by Pat Miller. Right there, had good position on the throw. And so, really, if you're, if you're Kansas right now, you're right on the cusp of even being in field goal territory. So you're really thinking about two downs right now. Two downs to score and two downs to possibly pick up the first down inside the six. The Mountaineer fans trying to make some noise. Dane Chris, the transfer from Notre Dame. Just a three-man rush. Not much pressure. Fires. Intercepted. Picked off by the freshman Carl Joseph. There is a flag down near the five-yard line. Carl Joseph has been arguably the best freshman in this conference from start to finish this year. Comes up with another huge play. I think this flag was after the interception. Well, they're going to have a discussion. <laughs> well, the arms are folded. <laughs> Could be a long And Charlie one. follows them. I'm sure Dane Chris is arguing that there was holding down, down the field on his receiver. Oh, yeah. There is no foul on the play for targeting. It's first down. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I guess you got to put one on your chest. I, I, that's the second time I think that they've gone after the head of a Kansas receiver, and they haven't thrown the flag yet. Carl Joseph, though, with his second career interception. This young man could be a freshman All-American. We come to you from Morgantown, West Virginia, where we have been seeing some hard hitting in the first quarter of this game. And a little questionable, I think, here, Steve. Uh, you know, I'm trying to defend uh, defenseless receiver, that one on Kale Pick. He was almost knocked in the middle of the field to Patterson, picked off by Joseph, but sure looks like they went to the head. Both players look like they were defenseless to me. Earl Joseph gladly will take the interception, but Charlie Weiss pitching his case about defenseless receivers to to feed the referee. So here is Geno Smith, who is 25 and 12 as a three-year starter at West Virginia. Today is his 38th straight start, and he will run the football. Tavon Austin with a short. Well, he's taken down for a, let's say, a three-yard loss. That doesn't happen much. Benny Goodman, the backup defensive end, was in the backfield there to take him down, and that's what you have to do to stop Austin. You need quick penetration. Make him stop and move before he can get to the line of scrimmage. Austin now goes in motion, likely a passing down for Geno Smith. And he does play action, and he swings it to Tavon, and here he goes to work. Escaping one, gets the first down. 
How many times in the Oklahoma game did he completely erase a would-be tackler and run out of bounds? Well, here he is, okay? I mean, all he is right now, he picks up good blocks on the outside. The Kansas really overruns it. Batman overruns it, and now he can just stop, start, make people miss. He becomes a punt returner the moment the ball is in his hands. His vision downfield, and then his foot quickness is second to none in all of college football. He has 107 receptions. Run to the right side. Only Marquise Lee of USC has more with 112. And Tommy Schuler of Marshall, who has 110. And then Austin, Austin now with 107. David Austin has carried it over 50 times this year. And every time he's carried it, he's averaged over 10 yards a carry. <laughs> it's just ridiculous numbers. They said they're just trying to find ways of getting him the ball as often as possible. Now they fake away from him and run the football to Andrew Bowie, although there is a yellow flag down at the 32. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense, number 77. 15-yard penalty. Second down. Brian, quite frankly, that's what kept Iowa State in the game at Ames. They had 11 penalties in that game for 107 yards. Now, their defense also allowed the Cyclones 234 on the ground, but that's one of the reasons why they lost five in a row, is they were a heavily penalized team. Constantly put themselves in tough situations. No play action pass. Rolling to his right. Going deep. Looking for J.D. Ward, who makes a remarkable catch at the 30-yard line. Great Brown fell down. The corner on the play, who's had a good season in this conference. I mean, Geno Smith just launched that. I don't know if it was in the air, 60 yards. He just launches this ball. You're going to see Great Brown number five. He trips, and J.D. Woods just really concentrates well, reaches back over his shoulder. Quite a catch by Woods. He has had some terrific games like the Baylor contest where Woods had 13 catches for 114 yards. But when we were talking to the West Virginia coaches this week, I remember you asking the offensive coordinator, the head coach, Dana Holgerson, man, you guys send somebody deep every play. Yeah, they're always, uh, they got a deep shot built into the passing tree every play. And uh, Woods, one of the 21 seniors they're honoring here today, uh, that one will bring back good memories. <laughs> and Chino Smith. I just launched it. Yeah, this is what I do. Here is today's Brown hand center. Great hands of the game. This yeah. is a great adjustment Boy, by J.D. It sure is. I mean, he turns his body. Great body control. And then he gets both hands on it. Total concentration. Really rescued Geno Smith a little bit as the ball's thrown a little bit behind him. That's, that's a circus catch. You know, they always say, if you can touch it, you can catch it. That's an example. <laughs> you know, whatever I got to do here. Now, J.D. Woods is a, you know, he's got good size. He's 6'1". A lot of kids from Florida. Woods out of Naples, Florida. Gino out of Miami. They've hit uh, South Florida quite a bit for some of their really key explosive players. Meantime, the reason we're having a delay on the game, they're trying to help Kiba Augustino off the field. He is a junior defensive tackle from Katy, Texas, and apparently hurt his right leg. Smith, meantime, very efficient, very explosive. He's completed four of his five passes for 117 yards. The one in completion, the interception. And West Virginia on the move again at the KU 30. Swing it left, Stedman Bailey. He is out of bounds, but gets a first down. Think about this, Steve. These kids grew up together, played the same high school, same town. They weren't recruited together. I mean, they both ended up here, but it wasn't like it was a package deal. Hey, I'll come if you come. They both ended up here, and for four years now, they've been putting on a road trip. Gina said the first time he came here was in 10th grade for a quarterback camp. And they run the middle and slamming forward is Sean Alston. And right now they are gashing this KU defense. Well, pick your poison. Pick your poison. You know, try to defend the perimeter with Tavon Austin and Stedman Bailey. Or now try to... Ben Heaney, the middle linebacker, runs right out of there, anticipating the ball going to the perimeter. And Alston takes it right up the middle. So no middle linebacker in the field, in the middle of the field. 
you're going to gain yards. Austin out, Bowie in. We have a heavy load look to the right side with two fullbacks, and they hand the ball off to Bowie, who escapes the right side, gets inside the 10, but there is a flag down, and it looks like it may go against the Mountaineers. They take big splits up front for their offensive line. Holding. Offense, number 62. 10-yard penalty, first down. That's my man Curtis Fight out of Berlin, Germany. Just the right tackle on the play. Gets this, you see that right hand, right hand on the outs, then the left hand there onto the, the jersey of Josh Williams. If he takes the hand off the jersey, he'll be fine. They see that, that hand extended, grabbing the jersey. It's a pretty easy call to make. Dana Holgerson's West Virginia Mountaineers were one time number four in the nation after their six no start, but then lost five straight. And it is Gino over the middle. He goes to his favorite target, and that man is Austin all the way down to the one-yard line. A gain of 20, and they get the first and goal. But watch the hit on the backside here of Geno Smith. These, these are the type of plays that the, the next level want to see. Can he make those type of throws? Oh, Ooh, nice, nice catch. Wow, <laughs> there's some sticky fingers. They marked him down at the three. They hand it off to Alston, who is cut down at the three. Fine defensive play by Tunde Bakari and Dexter Linton. But what I was saying about Geno Smith, that hit that he took as he delivered that ball to Austin on the prior play, those, those are the plays that the scouts want to see. Can he take a hit and then deliver the ball? What kind of poise does he have? They get rid of the ball so quickly sometimes, you never really see him taking many hits. He has shown in the first quarter he can throw the short, the intermediate, and the deep pass. Now he'll hand it off to Alston, who has hit once and then breaks free and scores West Virginia's second touchdown. Both of them on the right on the ground now. One by Andrew Bowie, the other one by Sean Alston. And there's this is just power football now. Power football, you just gonna. Really nice job on the left side there by Quentin Spain, the left tackle, just turning out Tobin Aparam, the, uh, the defensive end on the play. Bittenkurt makes it 14-0, but West Virginia, an offense that averages over 40 points per game. They have two on the ground, one by Bowie, one by Alston. It was his sixth rushing touchdown this season, and he is glad to be back after missing five games with that thigh bruise. Hey, fans, college football's biggest championship games are on Fox. Tonight, it's the Big Ten Championship as number 12-ranked Nebraska battles Wisconsin with a trip to the Rose Bowl on the line. Coverage of the Big Ten Championship begins tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, only on Fox. And we had a good one on Fox last night, yeah, the Pac-12 Championship. Stanford barely knocked off UCLA. But I tell you what, UCLA got off to such a great start last night. They're running the ball right down Stanford's throat. Turning and, point, uh, yeah, the interception. The interception, no question. But I like that young quarterback. Yeah, Hunley is going to be some player. Hunley and, and Logan, both time in the Pac-12. Both redshirt freshmen. Here is the kickoff at the goal line. Bashirs will be bringing it out. And I believe he just set the KU record for most yards on kickoff returns in a Jayhawk career. Well, it's just good to see him back in a uniform. He missed quite a few uh, games with a chest bruise. So just having him back out there at this point of the season is good for Kansas. He needed 16 and got 22. Yeah, it's always nice going in through the record book. We will see a new Jayhawk quarterback. They're going back to the redshirt freshman from Colleen, Texas, Michael Cummings. Much smaller at 5'10", 201, but better on the, with the run. And he will run and start upfield and get about five. Let's go to Jim Knox. All right, good news. Keep Augustine on the training table right now. It was his right ankle. They taped it up. He's going back in, guys. So that's at least some good news for Kansas. Yeah, they had a couple of guys, Knox Silly and Lovick Smith, and also Kale Pick. We have not seen the return of those two athletes, but uh, Kale Pick out there right now. That's good news. Yeah, yeah down here at the bottom. Senior. 
He was not in on their last series, and uh, here Cummings runs to the right side and keeps it. He needs to get to the 32-yard line for a first down. Michael Cummings with under 400 yards passing, four interceptions, and three touchdowns. And he is right now their quarterback, but they have a young man named Jake Heaps, who is a transfer from Brigham Young, who a lot of people feel will be the starter next year. But Cummings has that ability to do just this. And it looks like he gets the first down out to the 33-yard line where the tackle is made by Doug Rigg. Well, he's not a great runner. Uh, he's a good enough athlete to execute those kind of plays. But ultimately, what he wants to do is be a point guard. He wants to draw the defense to him and then get it to the perimeter turn the pitch. And right now, they're taking the pitch man away. They know that he's not as dangerous as either Sims or Pearson. So it's a, it's a good job by Joe DeForest, the defensive coordinator, to take the pitch away here. Sims is their power back. And Pearson is their speed guy. And it's going to be Cummings keeping it again. And he slams forward to the 35, just a gain of two. Well, that's four straight carries for Michael Cummings. Now watch this here. Watch, I mean, so you get the pitch. There's always a relationship. But watch the secondary coming down. They're taking Tony Pearson away. All right, so they've got right there, they've got their best defender, Carl Joseph, basically mirroring uh, Pearson on that play, and it's taking the pitch away, forcing Cummings to keep it. That's the West Virginia with a couple of rushing touchdowns, one by Bowie, one by Alston, and some great catches we've seen from Woods and Austin. College football, 14-0, West Virginia over Kansas. And the BCS rankings, well, Notre Dame, the only unbeaten out there that is eligible for a bowl. They are number one. They're off this week. But Alabama and Georgia are playing for the SEC title. Will it come down to the defenses or McCarron and Murray? Well, um, when you think about that game, I think you got to think about defense first. I mean, just hard-hitting, smash-mouth. Of course, the quarterbacks will be under the microscope, but you got to think defense in that conference, in that championship game all the time. KU with the football on a second down and long situation. They do run to the left, and a good game for Michael Cummings, who gets the first down. What is that, five straight runs for Michael? Well, if they keep giving it to him, if they keep taking the pitch away and not hitting him, now that's the next adjustment for West Virginia. Is all right, we've seen him run for a couple of first downs. Now let's go tattoo him and make him pitch the ball. This is a defense that has allowed 141 yards on the ground, but 346 through the air, dead last in all of college football. Cummings more of a running quarterback. Now he will pitch it. And as you said, Brian, not much there. Well, what they're doing right now is they're taking the safeties out of the middle of the field. And they're just assigning them to the quarterback or the pitch man. And they're mining the man across the entire perimeter. And at some point, Kansas is going to have to complete a pass down the field if they want to pick up some chunk yards and, and challenge West Virginia in the 14 points they got on the board. They had the one golden opportunity after a 41-yard pass from Dane Christ to his wide receiver, Terzilli, but they came up empty inside the red zone. So Sims now with the uh, carry. Wow, look at and He has a good gain to the 40. Love this kid. He's uh, closing he's, in on 1,000 yards. I mean, from Irving, Texas. Texas tough. Just a really, I mean, this is just great push up front. And then watch Sims just push the pile right now. He's got, that's three, that's four Mountaineers right now. That he's just literally bowling over for an extra two, three yards. And then he bounces right up, flips the ball to the umpire. Ready for some more action. I would imagine Hawkinson Slatnik. Yeah. Love to block from on that left side. Aaron Jelly in the middle and Denton Howard on the right side. And this is Cummings throwing. Oh, incomplete to Damon Patterson. Now they've gone for it on 29 fourth downs this year. And you got to go for it here. You're down two scores to one of the most explosive offenses in football. You're in four down territory. 
Brian, I've got to ask you, though, on third down and short, you're running the ball so well with yeah. either Cummings or Sims. Why not keep it on the ground? I agree. Especially if you already know in your mind you're going to have two downs to get it. Sometimes I think Charlie outthinks himself a little bit. Jayhawks must get to the 38 of West Virginia for a first down. They run it. Oh, they do not get it. See, that's why you should have run it on third down. I mean, that's if you if you gain a yard and a half, you'd still have another down. But that's a good stop by West Virginia. It's really, a deflating play for Kansas. Sims came up inches shy. Charlie Weiss might be ranked and be thinking that third down and two and a half. Woods and Austin with two fine catches early, and the Mountaineers are in front by two touchdowns. The Mountaineers, they love their college football. <laughs> I have no idea where they got those beards. But here we go back to live action. West Virginia has the football running Tavon Austin, and look at this guy fly. He is one of the most exciting players in college football. 31 yards. He is, he is unbelievable. You, you don't even have to put his name or number on a jersey. When the ball is in his hands, nobody else moves like this. Nobody else stops, starts, and adjusts. It's like a human joystick back there. Now play action, and they swing it to Stedman Bailey, who all of a sudden has the Mountaineers to the Kansas 10-yard line and a gain of 19. So they go 50 yards in two plays. Oh, uh, they can explode. I and mean, these two players are two of the best in all college football, and the quarterback stirring it right now might be the best quarterback in college. Austin. Uh-oh. <laughs> In that time, they had four white jerseys around him, and he had nowhere to go. Every once in a while, he actually comes out of the game, and he takes like, he never, he's never tired. He's always smiling. <laughs> he's like, look at that. That's great. And at 5'9", 171, he can't play look running back 100% <laughs> of the time, Brian. No, he can't. But you know what? Give him a little Gatorade. Give him a play. He'll be right back into the next play. <laughs> Durable as heck now. From the day he got here. They have a heavy load look. But they'll go and swing it to Bailey, and Bailey is cut down at the 8-7 yard line by Tyler Patman. Now it'll be third down. They need to get to the one yard line for a first and goal. Now Bailey is 5'10", but he's 195 pounds, and he's strong. Strong legs, strong lower body. He can break tackles. Physical player now. You know, I mean, I think he's going to be a tremendous slot receiver one day in the NFL. Empty backfield as Austin went in motion. They get it to Bailey on his 100th catch this year. He scores. Well, it's the 22nd touchdown catch of the year for Stedman Bailey. And really, the two guys that touched the ball in this drive, the three guys that touched it, Geno Smith, Tavon Austin, Stedman Bailey. It's a three-man show that has been ripping up the Big 12 this year and tore up the Big East for three years prior to that. How about that? Two receivers with more than 100 catches. It's the first time that has happened since 2007. When Texas Tech and Hawaii both had receivers do it. Haley's 27, 22nd touchdown catch this year. 21-0 Mountaineers. Forlorn Jayhawk fans because he's thinking, how do we stop that Stedman Bailey? 22 touchdown catches this year. And West Virginia just became the first team in five years with a pair of teammates with 100 or more catches. The last time done by Hawaii and Texas Tech. Not often that you catch 100 passes on a year, 22 touchdowns, and you cover kickoffs the way Stedman Bailey does. How about this? 34 touchdown catches by two wide receivers. KU has zero by their wide receivers. And here come the Jayhawks. 
to the 20 yard line. DJ Bashir's time for a Mazda game break. Here are Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Steve, check out this play from the Conference USA Championship game, Central Florida punting. Tulsa receiving and the ball's dead, right, Marcus? Oh, right absolutely here. not. And Trey Watts knows it. He picks it up while everybody else is standing around and he runs down the left sideline for a touchdown. Heads up play by him and great special teams coaching, Kevin. His dad, JC, got to be proud. We'll have the plays of the year coming up at the half, guys. Steve, Brian. Yeah, Kevin, that's, uh, that's very uh, uh, eminent of what JC Watts used to do in Oklahoma for a long time. Oh, a nice run by James Sims, and then he is upended by West Virginia's Darwin Cook. That's a first down run for James Sims. Best run of the day for him now. Just splitting it, hitting it. Right behind uh, Aslam Sterling, the right tackle, and Randall Dent. He now has 24 yards. He needs 20 more. Who go over a thousand yards rushing this season and remember he missed the first three games because of suspension and Sims with a gain of about two or three tackle by Rigg. No surprise to this point that they haven't thrown the ball to Tony Pearson out on the edge whether it's a bubble just like you see with Tavon Austin the bubble screens the hitches the jet screens I, mean, I just thought we'd see him on the perimeter a whole lot more to see him on the sideline that's their best playmaker right there I don't know if he's hurt uh, or he's done something wrong, but that man needs to be on the field if Kansas is going to have any chance to get back in the game. He had two long touchdown catches in the or one a run, one a catch against Iowa State. Cummings will keep it and get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard more, but that's it as Terrence Garvin, the middle linebacker for the Mountaineers, smelled him out and took him down. Well, the one thing about you know the Mountaineers, we know that they haven't been a good defense this year. But they went from the Big East to the Big 12, and they simply don't have the depth. And that's what Dana Holgerson knows, that he's got to, he's got to get too deep. They've got to recruit better. They're playing 12 freshmen on defense right now, but they've got talent and speed on that side of the ball. Three of those freshmen are cornerbacks, and that's where they have been hurt this year. And Cummings looking for the pass. Now he'll step up and run and get the first down. Tackle by Garvin. I will say this, though, Brian, they do have a guy sitting out who's transferring from Miami, Vernon Davis, who could be starting as a cornerback next year. Well, I look, I, I think when you have a defense that's given up 447 points, all right, one of the nation's worst, there's going to be a lot of competition for a lot of jobs, mm -hmm. just all the way around. Cummings now seven carries for 38 yards for the Jayhawks. Sims off to his right. Cummings keeps not much now Michael was born in Fort Hood Texas his brother played football at Prairie View and he was a great star at Killeen Texas his senior year though he missed five games because of injury and still total over 1100 yards and over 5,000 in a fine career was not recruited by Baylor no, was very right close to Killeen. Killeen is right in the backyard of Waco Pearson in the game. Off to the right side. Cummings looking that way. Firing for Tony. And he makes the catch. Was he in bounds or out of bounds? Holgerson is demanding for a replay. They're saying a catch. Ryan Judge just said catch right there. Holgerson says the opposite. I said Pearson has to get on the field. He gets behind the corner. Darwin Cook on the play. Oh, yeah, he's out. But right did he out. have his left foot when he caught the football? Uh, they better. And now Holgerson. <laughs> Dana is so funny to watch. He's screaming for them to stop the play. Here's his challenge. It will either be plus 42 for KU or back to the line as Holgerson arguing this sideline play. <laughs> West Virginia is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed catch. There was time for Kansas to go get that and snap that play off before Holgerson there. I mean, there's some chess that goes on here back and forth. Let's take a look at Tony Pearson's foot. 
See, when he caught no, it, the left foot was in, yeah. and then the right foot stepped yeah. out. So I, so right catch is the left foot still on the ground. It's going to be a bang-bang call. Yeah, you're right. Now, Dana's still a young man. His eyes are still very sharp. It happened right in front of him. Right foot tap and stay on the ground as the ball was being caught. It, this is a pretty quick decision here. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch. West Virginia will be charged a timeout, and they're out of challenges. See if we can just uh, freeze it. Charlie will take it. Do I have another play that gets the ball down the field in the end zone here? So we're going to freeze it right as Pearson catch. Right foot still on the ground. That is a great call by the side judge. And here he is looking at it. Great call by the side judge. Dana was just a hair off. That is Eugene Hall who's the side judge. And now it's a Kansas first down at the West Virginia 16. Cummings pitch. Sims big hole is to the two-yard line. Now that begins to look a little bit more like the Kansas running game. One big shot to Pearson. Sims, I mean, this is what has to carry him now. Finally, they get the pitch outside. Boy, he's hungry. He wanted that touchdown, too. He's had eight of them, eight rushing touchdowns this year. He'd love to make it nine. Even though Kansas is one and ten, they have been tough on their opponents. They have suffered five losses by seven points or less. And they slam the middle, get it to the goal line. West Virginia determined to keep them out. It's been a good, off it's been a good offense line, Steve, all year. Every time I look up and I watch a Kansas game, Hawkinson is in there, 48 straight starts. Marin Jelly snapping the ball to the quarterback, Dent. Sterling, a junior college transfer at a Nassau Community College in Garden City, Long Island. Zlat Zlat Zlatnik, the left guard. I mean, they're up there every single week. They want this ball in the end zone. They've got Bourbon as the off back to the left. They give it to Sims. He slams the middle. He is in for the score. That's a nice drive by Kansas. Really nice drive. And really, their three guys touched the ball. You know, that was Cummings, Sims, and Pearson. A lot like what, you know, West Virginia did the series before. Their three star players basically got the ball down the field, put it in their playmakers' hands. Impressive 80-yard drive in nine plays executed by Michael Cummings, who had a couple of nice runs, but more so is James Sims to get it down there and finishing it off for Lago. Sims with 43 yards now rushing. One shy of his first 1,000-yard season. Pearson with the big play and the catch of 42. Coming up, Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen will get us ready for halftime right after these messages. Guys, coming up at the half, Oklahoma still has a shot to win the Big 12 championship. That's if they win today and Kansas State stumbles later tonight against Texas. Well, if Kansas State doesn't stumble, they'll be back-to-back -back champions of the Big 12. Good point. Speaking of championships, we'll also preview the Big 10 championship, Wisconsin and Nebraska. That's all coming up at the half. Steve, Brian. Thank you very much. And Kansas State will be hosting in the Little Apple the yes. Texas Longhorns. Colin Klein hasn't lost to him yet. No, and he'd like to go out in his final game there at Kansas State before his BCS game. Uh, a winner. Same time, Sims capped off that 80-yard drive. Four minutes and 23 seconds off the clock. Sims now one yard shy of a 1,000-yard season, and here is the kick. They'll kick it away from Austin. Stedman Bailey will bring it back. He has dropped at the 25-yard line. Well, it has been a, a tough road for the Kansas Jayhawks. They could become the first BCS team without a league win in consecutive years. Since 2007, they have lost 20 straight conference games. They've lost 20 straight games versus FBS opponents. Their last win, September 10th, 2011, against a pretty good Northern Illinois team that won their league title yesterday over Kent State. Yeah. And um, their last road win was against UTEP in 2009. So a lot of dubious distinctions that they'd love to erase in Morgantown today. 
Geno Smith almost gets sacked. Now does. That is only the 10th sack this year by the Kansas defense. Yeah, and you'll see a nice play right there by John Williams. They blitzed on this play, so they get five rushes. They blitz off the corner. That's initially the pressure on Geno Smith. Geno Smith, he's a pocket quarterback. You know, that's where he wants to make his plays, but that collapsed pretty quickly. Nice call by Dave Campo, sending the corner cat after Geno Smith. Loss of seven on the Operum sack. Logan started his career at KU as a running back and was their leading rusher as a freshman and moved to that linebacker defensive end position. And here's a good solid run by a West Virginia Mountaineer, Andrew Bowie, up near a first down. Gain of 14. They'll need three more. Now he is their leading rusher. We haven't talked much about him today just because Austin and Bailey have been so outstanding. But uh, that time again, Kansas said another corner blitz kind of open up things in the middle for Bowie. Bowie stays in the game. It's third and three for Smith. Now they send Bowie in motion. Blitz is on. Gino picks it up, fires and completes the first down and gets more from Austin. He is a blur. He is a blur. <laughs> They're going to miss him here. They're going to miss him in Morgantown now. I mean, the crowd. What, is he actually taking his mouthpiece out to get some air? <laughs> like he might actually be a little tired after that one? <laughs> so many fans wearing his number yeah. one jersey. Wow. They run the ball to the left and a big hole left side for Bowie, and he escapes for about eight yards. I tell you, like a fine European sports car. Here he is in the middle. <laughs> And now he just gets, I mean, it just gets into fifth gear now in a hurry. It's a Fiat 500. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, more like Ferrari myself, but. <laughs> hey, those, those new electric Fiat 500s yeah. are really fast. 12 men on defense. That penalty's declined. Second down. 12 men on defense aren't going to slow down Tavon Austin. 13 aren't going to stop him. <laughs> and Charlie's like, I, like, I know he's good. It's my first time seeing him live. I know. I think even Charlie's saying this this is the single best player in college football, what he can do. Reverse. Austin to the five, to the four. <laughs> Little reverse action this time. Watch it. <laughs> that was behind the back. That was flipped behind the back from Geno Smith. The right arm is trying to straighten him out. is complete to Ryan Nealon and he is a great story it's only his seventh catch this year but his grandfather is a Hall of Famer for the Mountaineers John Nealon and his father dad is the head equipment manager well coming into the stadium you go right down Nealon Drive mm -hmm. yeah, one of the 21 seniors that we've kind of given some attention to here this afternoon and goal. <laughs> to the one yard line and then pushed back. Avon Austin who doubles as a running back, a slot receiver, they'll split him out wide. If you just look at college football for the entertainment value, that's the most, that's Broadway right there. That's the most entertaining player in all of college football. He simply takes your breath away with the ball in his hands. You said you think he might be a Wes Welker at the next level. Yeah, I mean, he has that type of quickness and toughness. They try the middle. It is Alston with his second touchdown today. He's a good finisher now. He is a big boy out of Hampton, Virginia. That's his seventh touchdown of the season. And they're a different football team when he's in the backfield. I mean, you can look at that five-game losing streak when everybody was on pins and needles. Were they going to win a game, get to a bowl game, all that? He's a big difference.
they did not have the power back during that stretch when he missed five consecutive games with that five ruse. And the head Mountaineer, he's got them all fired up. Here in Morgantown, they're Craven for more Tavon. Why not? Alston for the final one. West Virginia back in front by 21. Fox College Football is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. And on your way home, make a late night foodie call to Jack in the Box. Man, it looks like the West Virginia band has been drinking what Tavon Austin's been drinking. That, I think they got some quickness. They sure do. And the must. Hey, look, you're the minute. You're the Musketeer right there. You got to be in good shape because this team could score a lot of points now. He's done a lot of push-ups this season. <laughs> no question about it. Here is our Coors Light game summary for this afternoon's contest between West Virginia in search of their seventh win. DJ Bashirs shattering the all-time Jayhawk kick return record. And James Sims with 43 yards rushing needs one more for 1,000. Geno Smith, look at those numbers. Only... One incompletion, but he still has not thrown a ball that's no. hit the turf. No. He, one incompletion is the interception. It is last nine in a row since that interception. Razor sharp. Just an electric group on offense. From the 25-yard line. They dump it off. Short gain for Mundine. Mundine. This is some, I mean, it's just my first town, time to Morgantown here. This is a tremendous stadium, atmosphere. I mean, this really is college football. You and I were excited to come here yeah. because we had never been to Morgantown. We heard what a great football environment it is, and it, it, it's spectacular. Yeah. And, and, and just listening to Geno Smith talk about it where he said, you know, I came here for the first time in the 10th grade, and that's why I wanted to come back because the community cared so much for the team. Well, they and love he goes, these four years have gone so fast. Just think about it. When they, these seniors came in, you know, the fall of 2009, and here it is in a blink of an eye, it's, it's all over. And these fans, whether they've got uh, the Mountaineer hats on or not, they have been entertained now by some of the best players in all of college football. There was a moment before the game where you had like 65,000 Mountaineers all singing, Take me home, country road. Yeah, man. Their song here. Big down here. Third down. Kansas trying to stay alive and stay in this game. KU two for five, converting third down. Cummings going deep. Incomplete. Fourth down, and now they'll give it back to a football team that has two minutes and 42 seconds to well, score, and they can do it. They can score 21 points. And Charlie needs a quarterback next year. You need a guy on third down to complete third down passes like that one to keep drives alive to keep the ball away from electric players like Tavon Austin well we were talking to uh, the defensive coordinator for the Jayhawks Dave Campo about what it's like to face Jake Heaps and he had the responsibility for the scout team to be Geno Smith and he said this young man has it all he said he's competitive he has terrific feel for his passes he was a high school all-american coming out of the pacific northwest and then going to bring him young and he likely will be the guy next year with two years of eligibility well he had started five games for byu through five interceptions they benched him and he basically uh you know said i, I need to go someplace else start new and he he doesn't like the attention he just wants to you know, come back here next year, compete for the starting job. Nobody, he doesn't think he's going to be giving it. Michael Cummings will be competing. Others will compete. But uh, from all, everything we've heard and scout team, he's been lighting it up all year. Geno Smith to the air. Stedman Bailey with the catch. And he's got the first down to the 45-yard line where Bradley McDougal finally brought him down after a gain of 20. And it's, been, it's been like that now for two years. I mean, it's Bailey on one side. It's Austin on the other. It's Smith in the middle. They bounce each other up. Austin right now in the backfield. He goes in motion. Of a 
about four by Andrew Bowie. One of the things Geno Smith does, though, is you just saw Austin go in motion. I mean, he's basically calling a lot of the plays, a lot of checks at the line, get into the right run. You know, is it going to be the bubble pass, the post to, to Bailey? Which I mean, Geno Smith is calling this based on what he's looking at right now as he surveys the field, looks at uh, where the defense is, and then he's given the play. Smith steps up, throws a rocket for a first down. Austin catch at the 10-yard line. It's almost not fair. I mean, Greg Brown's a good corner. But really, Austin is just so electric. He jumps quicker. He jumps before Greg Brown does. He takes it right from he just adjusted to the ball the way he got to. That's not good English. The way you have to. Okay, I'm going to correct myself. <laughs> You're I'm, a I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a college campus here. I accept it. Let me get better English going here. <laughs> Austin motion. Instead, they run the middle and move off to the left side. Bowie, and then a good hit by Ben Heaney. It's the first time we've called his name today, but he leads his team in tackles. It's not even close. Over 100 tackles for Ben Heaney. The sophomore. And that's the way. Well, that's a good initial hit as well right that time by Dexter Linton. Heaney, Tharp, and Love, all three linebackers will be coming back next year. It'll be a, it'll be a strength to the team. They also recruited a very good junior college linebacker out of American River JC. Smith stepping up. He will run and cuts it to the eight-yard line where he's finally taken down by a Jayhawk Stowers. West Virginia is going to get a timeout here. Talk about this is they'd like to get their fifth touchdown here before halftime. We've got a timeout on the field, and next Saturday, fans, the UFC returns to Fox as lightweight champion Benson Henderson puts his title on the line against top contender Nate Diaz, highlighting a full night of epic fights. Coverage of UFC on Fox 5 begins next Saturday at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on Fox. We come to you from Morgantown, Virginia. <laughs> A little country boy right there as they sing it in unison. <laughs> Thank God Man. I'm a country boy. They don't mind. I tell you. And we Good are for country. We are broadcasting from Myland Push Car. <laughs> you know what? If it feels good, do it. And that's the um, English professor. <laughs> yes. Yes. He's going to be breaking down Chaucer's old English <laughs> on Monday. Four for five on third down is Geno Smith, and he fires down the middle, and it is a touchdown. I wasn't sure if Woods held on to it long enough, but yeah. the back judge said he did. That was a stick throw by Geno Smith. I mean, he just ripped, he just pulled back and just ripped it. He's, we've seen every touch. We've seen every pass here from Geno Smith today. Watch this one. Watch this one. I mean, that's on a rope. That thing is spinning at a high RPM. Not a wobble in the ball. Third leading receiver, J.D. Woods, catches his fourth down touch, touch, touchdown pass this season. Point after is good. And like we told you, they had 242 when they got the football. And they just went right down the field and score their 35th point. And Smith, what an afternoon, 14 for 15, 279 yards, two touchdowns. I've really been impressed with this senior. I really have, too. You know, we see him in the two years in this offense, and he was underneath the center. They could do all of that stuff that you have to do at the next level, but, you know, he's not going to get a whole lot of chances to celebrate in this type of atmosphere. I think he's just enjoying every single moment out here this afternoon. Those are two of the 21 seniors playing their sure. final game at Milan Pushkar Stadium. Dana Holgerson eyeing his seventh win, and there's some talk that West Virginia couldn't play in the pinstripe bowl against Pitt in the old backyard like, brawl. Well, wouldn't that be wonderful? I missed the backyard brawl, and I think that would be fantastic for college football. Now, that's just a rumor yeah. we have heard. 
but the Big 12 has been fantastic this year. Nine of the 10 Big 12 teams are bowl eligible. They're the only league with 90% rate, and that's the highest mark in college football history. Yeah. Nine out of 10 teams, they don't play a conference championship, obviously. They all play each other. It's a unique conference. Okay. And one defined by great quarterbacks and great offenses. Tonight, I want to watch that Texas-Kansas State game. <laughs> that is too. a wow game tonight. And here goes Cummings looking to pitch. And then when he saw his man Pearson contained, he kept it himself. And likely will be the final play of the first half. And both teams are moving towards their locker rooms. Charlie Weiss. Another headache as he heads to the locker room with his team trailing and in danger of losing for the 11th time this year. Let's go to Jim Knox. All right, thanks, Steve. Tavon just said a few words to you going off there. What does he say? He looks like he's having a good time. Well, I've been giving him a hard time all day. He's, he's obviously making a lot of plays, but he's yet to get into the end zone, so I kid him around on that. He says he's... Says he's got at least one more quarter in his uh, career here on Mountaineer Field, so we'll try to get him in the end zone. There we go. Coach, talk about Kansas. They start Chris at quarterback, and they come out throwing. Did that surprise you? Well, we kind of had a feeling they might do that. You know, obviously our pass defense is uh, not, not, not spectacular at times. So uh, they tried that, but then they ended up going back to what they've been doing, which is running the football. All right, thanks, Coach, for the time. Appreciate it. Halftime here in Morgantown, where West Virginia leads Kansas 35-7. to Now we take you out to Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen in Los Angeles for our Fox College football halftime. season ended last week with Thanksgiving. The Mountaineer is still hungry and he's going for yeah, man, no, cold pizza. Cold pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Fiziak along with Brian Balding. When this game started we talked about Geno Smith and Tavon Austin and wow have they been spectacular. And that's all I've done at halftime is talk about those guys. I mean everybody is buzzing and it did take long. The first pass of the game. Stedman Bailey, the senior, the high school teammate of Geno Smith goes 46 yards. Geno Smith gets out Inside the pocket, he finds a really a twirling J.D. Woods for a big play down the field. And then Tavon Austin has just been electric, absolutely electric, explosive. He's even quicker and faster in person than you watch him on tape or on TV. He just runs you for paper. You don't need a rearview mirror. There's nobody's going to catch him. This touchdown here to J.D. Woods was a stick throw by Geno Smith. All the stars have come out here for West Virginia. They all delivered, and, and, you know, look, 390 yards of offense at halftime. Uh, it, it was really Charlie Weiss's biggest fear. On pace for almost 800 yards total offense. And there is Tavon Austin. You saw him with his coach, Dana Holgerson. And Dana was teasing him, hey, you've got no touchdowns. And he said, I still probably have a quarter left to play. Let's go to Jim Knox. All right, thanks, Steve. Just got through talking to Kansas head coach Charlie Wise. He told me, he told his team at halftime, forget what happened in the first half. I don't care about it. Let's see what you can do in the second half. We need touchdowns. We're going to do what we do best, that is run the football. I asked him, what did he think about Tavon Austin? His thoughts on him as a player. He said, well, before the game, I thought he was great. The bad news is I'm right. He's great. <laughs> I Pretty think that's a little bit of humor, a little humor by Charlie, and rightfully so. I mean, all he could do is just sort of exalt in his performance in the first half. Meantime, KU with 85 yards rushing, and as Charlie said, that is our bread and butter. We're going back to it. They averaged over four yards a carry in the first half, but then there were times they went away from that. Yeah, well, look, Michael Cummings isn't going to beat him running the ball, but that's what West Virginia credit Joe DeForest, the defense, defensive coordinator, has done. He's basically saying if Cummings keeps the ball, we'll be fine. They're not going to get any big explosive plays if he's turned the corner for six. The play is stopped. False start. Offense, number 84. Five-yard penalty. Second down. 
that can't happen is Mike Ragone, the tight end, the guilty party, and they go from a second and short to a second and long, and instead of really giving uh, Charlie opportunity to go with play action pass, all of a sudden he has to yep. maybe put the ball in the air. Yeah, and really for Mike Ragone, you know, he started with Charlie at Notre Dame. He transferred back here. Uh, you know, he's from Camden Catholic High School in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, he's just better. A fifth year senior's got to know better than that. They pitch it out, and getting stuffed is James Sims for a loss of about four yards. And it was Terrence Garvin, the middle linebacker, another one of the Mountaineer seniors. This young man from Baltimore is the cheerleader supporting their defense. Well, really, Kansas, I mean, Charlie says it. We're a one-dimensional team. We run the ball, and right now they're taking all the pitches away. And that's what Garvin did that time. He was basically man-to-man -man on Sims. So can Michael Cummings drop back here and find a, a receiver for 15 yards? West Virginia has slowed the Kansas running game. KU averaged 280 yards per game the last four. Cummings steps up, spins away from trouble, dumps it off. Oh, did they get a first down? That's a great effort by James Sims. He's going to be right on the mark, just shy of the 35. No, he's a... Yeah, they're a little bit, uh, almost a yard short now. Charles going for it. Hey, you're yeah, 110. Life's been trouble. 20 straight losses versus conference opponents. Got his big two tight ends coming in the game right now. Smiley and Ragone. And a little power football here. And KU will take a timeout. Timeout, Kansas. First time out of the half. With 12 minutes and 45 seconds left in the third quarter, Charlie Weiss will talk things about this important fourth down play here in Mountaineer country. Putting together the best conference in college athletics can sometimes be a little puzzling. But when the pieces come together, the competition that ensues can be breathtaking. So, block by block, piece by piece, the Big 12 Conference has taken shape. It's a new footprint with some new friends, but the same standards of academic and athletic excellence. The Big 12 Conference, where even for our mascots, it's always game day. Our hearts beat in the face of challenge, for without it, there is nothing, no character, no grit, no goals. Without challenge, there can be nothing. No discovery, no knowledge, no cures. For us, the challenge is everything. Without it, there can be no Mountaineers. Fox College Football is presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. By Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the blocking sled right down there in the end zone. And on fourth and one, it takes you back to those hot August afternoons of two days when you're hitting sleds. And you're like, why are we doing that? You wear a helmet to, to uh, the stadium here, fourth and one, big on big. Who gets the yard here? Oh, a little shift. Trying to draw them off sides. Uh, yeah, they got him. They got him. They were never going to run that play. False start. Oh. Offense, number 14. <laughs> Even when everything goes right, it goes so wrong. The head bob. I didn't see it. Did you see a head bob? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the game I saw it yesterday. Was it quarterback head bob? Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm not sure if it was Any the MAC championship or the Pac-12 championship that I was watching where there. It was the UCLA quarterback that was called for the head bomb. Hundley. Yeah. And here is the punt. They don't give Austin a chance, and it is downed at the 23-yard line. We will see one of the most exciting players in college football, number one in West Virginia, telling his coach, I will score in the second half. We'll see if Tavon Austin can do that again. Sit on his sleeve, the pride of West Virginia, Morgantown, rated the number one small city in America. And my goodness, they are proud of their football team who uh, never punted in that first no. half. Just the one interception by Geno Smith. One of the only any completion on his part really a sensational first half of offense and well directed by the senior quarterback Geno Smith 14 for 15 for 279 yards in the first half he goes immediately to his buddy Stedman Bailey for his 13th consecutive and your, your high school coach Damon Cogdell he was former West Virginia coach coached him at Miramar High School down in Miami one of the reasons why these guys ended up coming here First down from the 37. Play action. Gino steps up, going deep. Stedman Bailey broken up at the 15-yard line. Fine defensive play by Jacory Shepard, and a late flag comes out. Wow, that was as delayed as you can get. I really thought that Jacory Shepard defended the ball well. Was in good position, got over the top of Stedman Bailey, got his hand in the way. West Virginia isn't walking down the field like it's defensive pass interference. He had completed 13 pass in a row. Defense. defense, number 33. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, there's Ja'Cory Shepard. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's a good call. I don't know why it took so long. I mean, he bumped him right there. He's got his hands. Sometimes that hanger's bottom of your pocket. Yeah, that's the right call, though. No question about it. So it's still 13 straight for Geno Smith because of the penalty. Now on first and 10 from the 48 of Kansas. Rockets it to Bailey. First down at the 36. This guy's got great hands. You don't catch over 100 passes a year like Stedman Bailey has without great hands. <laughs> There's a bunch of good hands. <laughs> That's a good shot. They do that That's on it. every single first down. WVU first down. Waving those hands. And here's Geno Smith throwing it to his tight end and nothing there. He still has completed 15 straight passes. Watch these fingers here. Stedman Bailey in the play before. Just snatching it. That's the way to go up and get it. And then immediately tuck it away. Put it right into a safe spot right there. High for it. Explosive athlete with great hand. Second and 11 play action to Austin. Gino rolls and then will run out of bounds. He had no one open. His defense supplied by Tyler Patman. So it'll be third down. Let's see where they mark that football right at the 36 yard line. So they'll still need 10 for the first down. I see why Dana Holgerson took this job here at West Virginia, knowing the players that he had to work with. Won 10 games in his first year. And Huge. Absolutely demolished Clemson in the Orange Bowl. 70 points in that one. They will run on third and 10 and get the first down and more. Bowie finally knocked out of bounds. Everybody smiles for West Virginia. And they all got it. You can't get it off their face. Nice block that time by Quentin Spain. The left tackle, really good block on the outside of Tobin Aporum. 
You can see the speed of West Virginia. Kansas just diving at their feet and not able to get them out of bounds, taking bad angles. They needed 10, they got 17. Now Gino will run, and he will slide forward very close to a first down, but I believe, let's see where the mark is, should be near the 10. It will be near the 11. That's a professional slide by Geno Smith. I mean, just giving himself up feet first. That's, that's how every NFL quarterback is supposed to do it. Just like that. That's, that's a good skill to know as you get ready for the NFL next year. Here's the run left. Austin is taken down at the 10. They'll still be shy of a first down. But Geno Smith's mom, Tracy, is here. This is only the fifth game she has watched. She was here for the Baylor game where they scored 70, and her son threw for a school record 656 yards. She only comes for their victories. <laughs> okay. 4-0 so far for Tracy. Well, she's the good luck charm. Mm -hmm. They run left, and Austin cut down. It will be a loss in the play, fourth down. And McDougal was able to take down. That was the ninth tackle for Bradley McDougal. Hey, he's a good player, too. I mean, he's a senior as well. Leader of the secondary. 12 tackles against TCU and Oklahoma State this year. Do you think after that little exchange before halftime between Dana and Tavon that he wants to get him a touchdown in the second no half? No question. No question. But he doesn't want to do it at the risk of bad sportsmanship. Yeah. Bittencourt with a 30-yard field goal, putting the Mountaineers up 38-7. to They have been fun to watch here in Morgantown, West Virginia, on a beautiful afternoon on campus. Take Me Home Country Road. They were singing it here in Morgantown, where they love their Mountaineers. That last scoring drive... Bittencourt, 30-yard field goal, a 62-yard nine-play drive brought to you by Jack in the Box. A couple of seniors there talking about it, Austin and Woods. Final game here at uh, Milan Puskar Stadium. Pearson. Escape one. And Tony out past the 25-yard line. We have more great college football action coming your way as the biggest championship games are on Fox. Tonight, it is the Big Ten Championship as number 12-ranked Nebraska battles Wisconsin with a trip to the Rose Bowl on the line. Coverage of the Big Ten Championship begins tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, only on Fox. Taylor Martinez has done a fine job this year, leading the Nebraska to 10 wins. Monte Bell Ball, over 1,500 yards, but the Badgers have suffered five losses this year. Yeah. All that matters is today, the game today, though. Brett Bielema will have them ready to go. Sims with a short run. He still is short of 1,000 yards in his excellent career. He is a junior. Now with 39 yards in the day. Needed 44 for 1,000. He was at 43 where he needed one more yard, but then he had a four or five yard loss. Now his best day of the year was against Texas when he went for 176, and that was probably Kansas' best shot to win a big. Mac Brown predicted that KU would get a victory after the impression that the Jayhawks made that day. A lot of guys stacking it up for the Mountaineers there. Kyle Rose in on that tackle. West Virginia having lost three consecutive home games, their longest skid in Morgantown since 1990. They're not used to that. But they haven't played in the Big 12 before, too. It was a big step up in competition, big step up in defending good offenses. Balls out.
Somebody's fighting in the bottom of the pile to get possession of the ball. As the Zebras fourth down. James Sims needed one yard for a thousand. He got two and almost lost the he football, is, but got it back. He's not a fumbler. Look at that. He just got rocked off the edge. Never felt that coming. That ball was out. That's Joseph. That is Carl Joseph. Just a rib shot. James Sims doesn't fumble, but he was rocked by Carl Joseph, who is a heck of a player. Yeah, Joe DeForest, their defensive coordinator, says this young man has a great future. He has, the review. he has played like 90% of the team's snaps. And he's the first true freshman to start at free safety since Robert Sands in 2008. Here is Joe DeForest. Carl Joseph said the only thing that he's scared of in this world is snakes. And I'm with you. I'm scared of them, too. I'm, they're in all my nightmares. And I should <laughs> never have said that. <laughs> <I> see? <laughs> No, that Carl Joseph, he's, I tell you what, he just shows up. And he can hit. He was, a, he was a great high school wrestler. You ever want to see guys that are good football players? A lot of them are wrestlers. They understand leverage. Uh, nobody comes to wrestling matches. I mean, you, you play that sport. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Of course it does. Yeah. You're That's getting support check. from the booth. Yeah. So James Sims with 1,001 yards, going over 1,000 for the first time in his career. He has gone over 700 yards rushing in each of his first two years at KU. He's not thinking about that now. He's thinking no. about costing his team. Because I haven't seen him, in all the games I've seen him in this year, I haven't seen him fumble. But that was about as hard as he's been hit all year, too. Tavon with the fair catch at the 26-yard line. We come to you from Mountaineer Field. The 32nd year where over 11 million fans have watched Mountaineer football. Plenty of reasons for the cheer squad to be smiling today. Their Mountaineers up 38-7, and their man, Geno Smith, is having another spectacular day. A school record, 15 consecutive completions, uh, yet another record with his mom in the stands. He broke his own record with 15 straight completions. On first down, screen. Stedman Bailey, or no, excuse me, this is Andrew Bowie down the right sideline, and Bowie is finally knocked out of bounds after a long gain, and Mr. Smith is uh, staring in the face of 400 yards passing after another 42-yard completion. He's now 18 for 19. Just a, just a simple screen, and it's well set up. Look at, you get the big guy Jeff Braun out front, pretty good cut block on the outside, freeing up Bowie. would like to change the play here. Bowie, huge hole. Taken down at the 16-yard line, and it looks like KU is absolutely worn out. Yeah. They've been chasing speed. It's Taven Austin here in the slot on this block. That's pretty good. I tell you what, he just took on a linebacker and just wheeled him. Uh, and Bowie cut right off. Stedman Bailey, his favorite target this year. Touchdown number 23 for Stedman. Wow. He found just a little patch of blue in the end zone to set his feet down on. Ninth catch for 144 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Geno Smith's going to throw this ball into a tight little window right there. He knows he's in. He's beat Ja'Cory Shepard yet again. When this season began, I was reading a scouting report on Geno Smith, and they said there were areas of improvement they wanted to see. Touch, not locking onto a primary receiver, pocket manipulation. How do you see those areas of growth here in the final regular season game? Well, I think that uh, he's firmly on top of his game. I don't know if there's anything left in college football that he has to do. I mean, just throw going to his left and putting it just where his receiver can, in that little window right there, 
It's one of those throws. You know, when the scouts start looking at this and they start getting ready for the whole process about the draft and all that for the next four months, those are the type of throws you're going to look at. Going to his left, how does he spin it? Stick throw over the middle that we saw him throw earlier today to J.D. Woods. Um, under pressure when he gets hit. We, got, we saw him get hit today. Completed the pass. Uh, all those things, you know, constantly show up. I, I think he's had a great season. Look, if their defense wasn't giving up 447 points, you know, this year, <laughs> if they weren't giving that up, I mean, he'd be the leading candidate for the Heisman. When they couldn't run the ball for a stretch of five weeks, he had to throw it every down. Uh, things went a little bit haywire. Well, the FBS record for most touchdown catches in a season is 27 by Troy Edwards of Louisiana Tech back in 1998. And Randy Moss, superstar at Marshall, had 25. But Bailey has tied Hazard and Fitzgerald. And, and uh, he's moved past Crabtree. He's moved past Hazard, excuse That's me. That's a pretty good list of names. Though. I'll say. Larry Fitzgerald and Randy Moss. I mean, those two guys have um, a little... You know, a little visit to Canton, Ohio, uh, down the road. But uh, that's good, pretty good company. Holgerson, you've got to get the ball to Austin for a touchdown, though. Sims in the game with 1,001 yards rushing. Play action. Cummings completes the pass to Kale Pick. And I tell you, we asked Charlie Weiss this week, who would make the future coach on your team? And he immediately said, Kale Pick. Well, and the reason why is he said he's just a steadfast note taker. I mean, he's got, you know, notebooks just full of notes that he keeps. And that's usually what coaches do. I mean, he's got a couple on his staff. Ron Powell was a quarterback at Notre Dame. And, you know, I mean, he's got a bunch of guys that were just like Kale Pick. You know, I mean, good college players and knew that their future was going to be in this game. And Charlie didn't hesitate to think that he might do it one day himself. Cummings under pressure. Almost had a pick six, as it would have been Carl Joseph to the house. Who else? Who else but Carl Joseph? Every time we look up and there's a play being made today, it's been Carl Joseph. I mean, this ball, it's probably the only mistake that he's made today. Leads his team in tackles. Got an incredible future in front of him. True freshman out of Orlando, Florida. He recruited Florida well. A lot of those stars right from that state. Sims with a flag on the play. Illegal formation, offense, five men in the backfield, five-yard penalty, second down. Let's go to Jim Knox. I see if you're talking about this Kansas defense. They are a worn-out bunch. Just about every player hanging their head right now on the bench. They're hoping right now this offense can sustain some type of drive to get them a little bit of rest. You know, guys, 5.07 left to go into the fourth quarter, and West Virginia still hasn't punted the football. If I had to chase Tavon Austin around yeah. for two and a half hours, I'd be exhausted, too. And here goes Tony Pearson, one of his rare touches, and he gets... Who else? Tony Pearson. Plus yardage on the play. Carl Joseph, Joseph takes him out. He just rocked him. That kid can't hit now. Uh, he is aggressive. That's what you want from your free safety like that. He has been all over the field, and... Two best defensive players, freshman defensive players in the Big 12 with Devontae Fields, the talented defensive end at TCU. Nine sacks. Nine sacks and a whole bunch of tackles for losses, and then there's been Carl Joseph. They gave the Oklahoma Sooners a tough game today, and the Sooners prevailing 24-17. So Kansas State must win over Texas tonight to win the Big 12 title. Damon Patterson was the intended receiver. Cummings could not complete it, and now they'll turn the ball over to the incredible offense of West Virginia. If you are Charlie Weiss, what do you do to bring this team back to the level it was just really five, six years ago? Mark Mangino. I mean, Mark Mangino did it with recruiting two college players, guys that were ready to play. He got a lot of stars, guys like Akeem Tlaib to come, gave him a chance to play, uh, and then they sustained it for a number of years. 
Well, they've done one thing right, and that's make sure that Tavon Austin never touches the football on a punt or kickoff return. Fans, tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday begins with the Vikings heading to Green Bay to take on the Packers in a key NFC North showdown or 49ers, Rams, Cardinals, Jets, Seahawks, Bears, or Panthers, Chiefs, or the Buccaneers take on Peyton Manning and the Broncos in Denver. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on Fox. And we at Fox send our thoughts and prayers to the Kansas City Chiefs oh. family after the tragedy that took place place today it's just the saddest of all stories and we'll be all over the news today and all day tomorrow here in Morgantown West Virginia with a 45 7 lead over Kansas you know, at some point here uh, Dana Holgerson has to take these seniors out you know and just give them the standing you know the, the standing ovation and the applause that they're gonna get I don't know when he's gonna do it if it's after this series it's gonna be soon though because that's a part of a senior day and the contributions that a lot of these guys have talked about today. It's not like basketball or baseball where you can take them out of the field so they get the standing ovation. He should do it during a series. Literally do it during a series and take Tavon Austin out with JD, you know, JD Woods and Tavon Austin. Take him out at one time and let the whole fans kind of let them uh, get the. Bowie slashing for about 10. Andrew Bowie, a sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Bowie's having a great day now. I mean, he's their leading rusher. Uh, but he's had a good afternoon. Almost 100 yards, 11 carries, 84 yards today. Good yards. Here comes Austin around the corner. And diving forward. <laughs> You know, he's such a joy to watch, but he is so close to so many touchdowns. What is he made out of? Is he made out of rubber? Because he just, like, he takes this ball up. Now watch him. He's going to go off the ground. He's going to bounce right up. Like, here's just, his body just bounces off the ground. Remember that Super Bowl we used yeah. to play with his kids? Absolutely. That's him. And he'd go over to the middle and bam! Keeps on ticking. The flag will go down. I tell you, he knew he was going to get blasted. He protected himself. Hanging on to the ball. McDougal was like laying the wood. They're like, they're not going to call it against us. I'm going to go try to lay out a receiver. The Bale's got great hands. Personal foul. Defense, number 24, targeting. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. I tell you, this concentration by Stedman Bailey, just, it's just, bam. But McDougal blasted him. He didn't even, he didn't knock it down. It shows you the toughness and the strength of Bailey to take that kind of hit. He now has 105 catches this year, 10 in this ball game for 159 yards and two scores. Austin. This is the end zone. Look at him. He's he's on the goal line like he's at church. <laughs> so close. Look at that shot. Holgerson's giving him chances. Yeah, look at this though. This is all him. He gets a block there, and now one, two, three guys miss. Oh, look at him. how hungry he is for that goal line. He has 186 yards total offense. He's the tailback number one. They give it to him. He goes to the line. Oh, did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown for Tavon Austin. Oh, yeah. Give yeah. that high you know pose. What? You deserve it. You deserve to give that kind of pose. That is something. What a performance. This is just effort. Hey, a little dance before. Stretches that out over, just knows how far he had to reach for that, for the goal line. Oh, man, he is some electrifying player. He has 187 yards total offense. 
77 on the ground and 110 through the air. And every time he touches the football, Mountaineer fans, ooh, there's the pose. Oh, yeah. You know what? Heisman hopeful, and he should be on the list, and he has to, he should absolutely get serious consideration. I know when you look at Teo and an undefeated season and what Johnny Football has done at A&M and what he did in Tuscaloosa, but what the Tavon Austin has done here now for four years is remarkable. Almost 7,000 all-purpose yards. First, the only Mountaineer in West Virginia history to score touchdowns four different ways, and Dana Holgerson loves him and certainly will miss him. I, I've run out of accolades, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm going through the whole, everyone that's ever popped into You've my head. You've got your thesaurus out looking yeah. up different terms, verbs, adjectives. You know, the things that they used to say about Barry Sanders, and, you know, I mean, just... Deshaun Jackson. I mean, a whole range of players. He seems like he's all of that in one. They are perfect in the red zone. Tony Pearson goes to one knee as West Virginia has 52 to Kansas is seven. And Tavon Austin finally got his <laughs> first score. You know what I like about Tavon Austin? He's enjoying every single moment of this. And not just today, but that's how he plays the game. I think he just loves it. Why not a little highlight package of them? Those feet are like nothing else. He is, is only 171 pounds. As tough, what do they say, like, you know, as tough as Texas shoe leather. You know, just, I mean, just remarkably durable. Tony Pearson tried to pull a Tavon Austin yeah. going left, and he sprints for a first down. They had Christian Matthews in the game as the quarterback, and he pitched it, and Pearson reversed his field for 17. Well, he's about the same size. I mean, there's 170 pounds as well. Missed a lot of games this year because of a dislocated elbow. Got a brace off his arm. He's got a little bit more mobility now, but, I mean, for the next couple of years, you know, Tony Pearson is going to be one of their featured players at Kansas. Bobcat here of Matthews. For more on the Austin Files, let's go to Jim Knox. I see some funny moments here on the West Virginia bench. A lot of the players came to him and said, hey, it's about time you finally got in that end zone. It's about time. Talking to Tavon before they got asked you, man, did you, how long have you been miss, getting players to miss you? How long have you had the speed? How long have you had the quickness? Ever since I've been doing it, since I was seven years old playing Pee Wee football. <laughs> if you, that kid wore flags today, you couldn't rip the flag off him. The fifth different Mountaineer to score a touchdown today, and this is a challenge. West Virginia, their defense has not played well this year, but they accepted the challenge, and in the final game, they lifted their game for the Kansas rushing well, game. Well, they're playing this pitch all the way. I mean, they got two guys on Pearson. So until Christian Matthews can really challenge them as a runner, I mean, West Virginia has played this pitch option Terrific all day, but it's the, it's the non-threat of a pass that they don't fear right now. Kansas came in averaging 280 yards rushing per game. Their last four, they have just 122 before that run by Christian Matthews ending the third quarter. It has been all West Virginia. From the very opening kick, they took it right down the field, led by Geno Smith, and the Mountaineers been firing that musket. Bailey with a couple of scores. Austin got his first. And KU feeling down. It's hard to believe it is December 1st because we have had a gorgeous afternoon in Morgantown, West Virginia. The Mountaineers all smiles and uh, Paul Millard likely will get in the game in the fourth quarter because Geno Smith has been a uh, rocket. 20 of 21, 374, three touchdowns, including 18 consecutive, which is a personal best for Geno. You simply can't dream it up any better of how to go out. Your final senior game day. is a senior. You can't, you can't dream it up any better. Christian Matthews, meantime, staying in the game for KU and uh, He's a guy who has been a wide receiver, kind of slot back this year. Wildcat. Yeah, the Jayhawk. 
Hawk so, yeah, I should say, call it the Jayhawk because the Wildcats are across the straight yes. a little apple. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't, don't want like to be that. called Wildcats. They don't like that. But, I have been reminded that by Jayhawk fans. Yes, that's all right. <laughs> Here comes Michael Cummings in the game and yet another fourth down shot right here. Carly they ring that bell. And you may hear in the background, like, we're going to ring your bell right now. They better, whatever they do, they better block Carl Joseph. Blitz on, Cummings throws underneath. Fine, low catch by Mundine. Gain of eight. And I tell you, West Virginia came after Michael Cummings that time. Two blitzers came from the second level getting after him. They did not want to give up that first down. They've been beat up enough on defense all year. They're like saying, you know what? We're going to have ourselves a good day. But they must recruit. They do have some talent coming back with both Sims, Pearson, and Cox. All three running backs coming back. Time for a Mazda game break. Here are Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Steve, the SEC championship game, and how about them dogs? Georgia strikes first, Marcus. Aaron Murray does a great job of picking up the blitz, hits his receiver downfield, Georgia jumps ahead. Jay Rome, the touchdown from 19 yards out. This is going to be a good one, Steve. Wow, Bama allowing only nine points per game. They and Notre Dame have the two top defenses in college football. Obviously, though, Georgia and Mark Ritt on in Atlanta. They had that one bad game against South Carolina, and that yep. has been it. And it was a bad game. Mm -hmm. Pearson. And some beautiful moves to uh, get inside the 25-yard line. I like Tony Pearson. He had an unbelievable game uh, against Texas Tech a couple weeks ago. He had 202 yards rushing that day. They ran for almost 400 yards against the Red Raiders. And that defense had played pretty good to that point. And they barely lost to Tech in two overtimes, 41-34. Sims Pearson combined for 329 yards rushing that afternoon as Sims gets the call and the carry. Looks like Doug Rigg is the man who is uh, down on his knees in pain. Oh, there's two, two Mountaineers down. The other one, Carl Joseph, the talented freshman we were talking about. Doug Rigg is from Oradell, New Jersey, the hometown of one Bill Parcells. you got to be tough coming out of Oradell. Parcells will be knocking on your door. Fox College Football is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. We come to you from Mountaineer Field, where West Virginia leads Kansas 52-7. KU has been inside the red zone twice, and they've scored one time. West Virginia has been in there eight times. They have scored eight times. Seven touchdowns. It is Cummings at quarterback on second down. Juggling the football as he went up the middle is James Sims. And let's go to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Steve. Right now they're working on Carl Joseph's neck right there, but it looks like his helmet's going back on. He checks out. He'll be coming in next play. He's played 98% of the snaps for West Virginia this year. He came as he came transfer here out of high school in January. They recognized in spring ball right away this kid was going to be an incredible player. Sims again crashing the middle and getting the first down near the 10-yard line. And it's hard to believe that a true freshman is in the top 25 in the nation in solo tackles much of the year. Yeah. I, and that's I, where Joseph's been. I should say that he enrolled in January, not yeah. transferred. From he, he may have uh, switched... Um, Train station. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All the down Long ways from Atlanta, Atlanta, Florida, but I think he's in the right place. Ooh. They've got, I think, 20 to 22 players from the state of Florida. And here they try the middle. James Sims with a short game. 
Clock well, winding down inside of 11 minutes to play. Well, I know who's enjoying this time-consuming drive by Kansas. It's their defense. I mean, they're all just sitting down. A lot of seniors on that defense. Sims getting himself a little rest right now. Greg Brown right there. Tyler Patman, secondary over there to Corey Shepard. They have been worn down all year long because of the overpowering offenses in this conference. Pearson to the right and is taken down by West Virginia's defense. And just an illustration, Brian, there are, the Big 12 has five teams averaging over 40 points per game. They have five teams averaging over 500 yards total offense. Yeah, well, I mean, it is, it, look, they play fast. They play fast. It's, it's speed football, fast football, a lot of snaps. You better have at least two deep. You better stay healthy. Um, there's a lot of great quarterbacks. There's four guys starting the NFL, you know, out of the Big 12 right now. Um, quarterbacks and offense that defines the whole conference. 14th play of this drive. And Cummings is taken down on third down. Carl Joseph. Now, I know, I know that Kansas is a running football team, but that's a, a lot on third and ten. There's Carl Joseph right there. He takes the pitch away, and then he comes in and it collapses on Cummings. I mean, really, when you draw it up on a chalkboard on Wednesday and you're like, this is our game plan, Carl. This is what we're doing. You can't execute it any better than that. <laughs> Take the pitch and then go kill the quarterback. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. 32-yard field goal attempt by Nick Prolago. And he gets it through. So we've got a time out of the field. Nine minutes and one second left of the entire season for KU West Virginia. They're wondering where they're bowling. Fifty-two to ten, West Virginia with the lead over the Kansas Jayhawks. Tavon Austin not in the game as a kick returner. We may have seen his final action. The crowd did erupt, and we're expecting uh, young Paul Millard to come out at quarterback. With Austin a senior and Stedman Bailey a junior, his remarkable year, he could come out after his junior season. So they're looking for wide receivers, but if you're a wide receiver, ooh, that, uh, that might be a penalty right there. And Jordan Thompson is part of their future, number 10. He's a true freshman out of Katy, Texas, and he might be the next, like, a Stedman Bailey kind of no guy. There is no foul on play for, for a face mask. The, the defender had his hand on the top of the helmet. No nope. Okay. Our Coors Light freeze cam, it's all about the smiles that Tavon Austin brings. And the footwork and... The plays and the touchdown and the Heisman pose. Let's give him a little bit of love for that because it has been a remarkable career for Tavon Austin. I remember when Desmond Howard first did yeah. that at Michigan. Yes, very similar type player. Yeah, and here is the swing pass, and it is Andrew Bowie has had a heck of a game, both rushing and receiving. He gets a first down on a gain of 15. Obviously, they don't need Geno Smith out there on the field, but you wonder, it's his final game here at Mountaineer Stadium. Can I just enjoy it? I'm not, I mean, I, just the best thing I can think of right here. He just loves playing. It's his final game here. He swings it left, and it's Stedman Bailey for a short game, but he's getting close to a few records, and that might be why Dana Holgerson has him out there. He is just... About 10 yards shy of 400 for this game. And I believe closing in on how many in a career? He needs about 12 yards for 4,000 on the season. And they run the football. Bowie with a huge rumble near midfield. <laughs> 18-yard carry and Andrew Bowie with another 100-yard gain. He had that sensational game against Texas when he ran for 207 yards and two scores. Gino throws.
goes underneath. This is J.D. Woods. And he may have just gone over 4,000 yards for the season on a gain of 17, and now he's coming out. That's exactly Listen what Listen to is. this crowd. Do you think Mom Tracy has chills right now? I do. I know that he will be remembered on this campus for a long, long time to come. They're, gonna, they're not going to forget about Geno Smith. Not only a great athlete, but a tremendous man of character. Now Paul Millard. Tavon Austin also coming out of the game after another spectacular evening. But for Geno Smith, only one incompletion, one mistake. And you said it was really his buddy, Stedman Bailey, yeah. who didn't come back for the football. He, he, didn't, he was actually perfect. Ben Bailey didn't come back to the ball in that play, and the result was Patman picked it off. But Gino Smith's just been so steady, just such a rock at that position. Dana Holgerson has a ton, had a ton of 4,000-yard passes going back to Cody Hodges and Graham Harrell and Case Keenan and Brandon Whedon a couple of years ago when he was his offensive coordinator, just name after name. And now I think Smith's Brandon, done it twice. I think Brandon Whedon, you know, selected by Cleveland. After the play, personal foul, face mask, defense number 31, pull the player's helmet off, 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. Smith today, 22 for 23, 407 yards, including a school record, 20 consecutive passes completed. <laughs> I can't get enough of Tavon Austin, man. That kid just, he's really enjoying the afternoon. Why not? Final time on Mountain Field. Blitz on. Millard is sacked and taken down by Ben Heaney. That's great. That's great. You know, these kids from Kansas, they haven't quit. You're seeing tackles by McDougal. Heaney on a blitz right now, right up the middle. Millard didn't get the ball out quick enough. Well, this young man is next. He is a 6'2 redshirt freshman from Flower Mound, Texas. He and four children likely will be battling for the quarterback position next year. Both were remarkable high school stars. Flower wow, wow. Mound is right outside of Dallas. Dustin Garrison will score. <laughs> All three running backs who have carried today, Bowie, Alston, and Garrison, have scored on runs. Well, I don't know. I think this is Garrison's first carry. It's a good block down the field from the tight end, Cody Clay. I think he was that musket's been fired a few times today. Second carry for 27 yards, but it was so long ago, Brian, that you thought it was last week. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Wow, it's dizzy. 59. 59 points. Well, they've been averaging over 40. And West Virginia on senior day, they wanted to celebrate with their fans. And we have seen a major party in Morgantown. He has been doing plenty of push-ups. 59 in this particular occasion and our Coors Light game summary a lot of records breaking Geno Smith 21 straight completions and how about Tavon Austin 2760 all-purpose yards if they weren't six and five Smith and Austin major Heisman conversation yeah, we've been talking about them all week this week as guys that uh, could legitimately take home the big prize we've had a blast this weekend in Morgantown it has been a beautiful day and a sensationally played football game by the Mountaineers. Out comes Taylor Cox. Good return. How about Mr. Austin and Mr. Smith? Who will get him next year?
Right now they're waiting for a bowl as he has played his final home game at Mountainer Field. Fifty nine to ten West Virginia has the lead and when this game began we talked about two talented seniors Geno Smith and Tavon Austin special games but incredible careers. Uh, they didn't disappoint today either and uh, we wouldn't expect them to. I can't even make sense out of those numbers. They're just so staggering. But the one thing the only way you get to those numbers is if you're durable and healthy and line up and play every week and that's what they've done here in Morgantown. Taylor Cox with the carry. Meantime, you look back at Geno Smith in this ball game. He was nearly perfect. Not one ball he threw touched the ground. 23 completions and one interception. That's it. Three touchdown passes. Austin, four catches, 110 yards, 12 rushes, 77 yards, and a one yard score. I think um, those two guys are going to be missed. They're going to be talked about. I think all. Uh, Mountaineers will get a chance to watch those guys at the next level for a long time. Taylor this time wrapped up. Time for a Mazda game break. Here are Kevin and Marcus. Steve, let's check in on the SEC championship game once again, and here comes Eddie Lacy, Marcus. When you talk about the Alabama running game, it's designed to wear you down over time, Kevin. Late in the second quarter, it's starting to wear down Georgia. Eddie Lacy, six foot one inch, 220 pounds, and he can move. We're tied at seven, and of course, we'll have all the highlights for the postgame show afterwards, Steve. Thank you very much, Kevin. And with all these spread offenses, will an offense like Alabama sometimes surprise him because they're not ready for that kind of power? Absolutely, especially with that offense. And it is a darn good one. As Brandon Bourbon gets moonshined here in West Virginia. Jack Petaway. Sophomore at us, Steubenville, Ohio, with a form tackle. Good defensive performance by that group all afternoon. Jordan Thompson back for the return. The story, Geno Smith, 23 of 24, a school record, 21 consecutive completions. We saw every type of throw, too. We saw the quick dart there on the jet screen. We saw the long post, the stick throw in the end zone to J.D. Woods, the rollout going to his left, finding Stedman Bailey, his high school teammate, right in the corner patch of the end zone. What a display. What a, what a remarkable display. Dana Holgerson said he'll be a first round pick. He said he can do everything, make all the throws. He can get under center, can take the seven step drops. He manages the huddle well, checks to the runs better than anybody he thinks in college football. And uh, what a burger, what a player, what a night. Well, if anybody, I mean, if anybody wanted to see Geno Smith in person, you're scouting him, you wanted to go watch him. I, th I think you saw him at his very, very best, at the very height of his game. They said, as good as they were, number four in the nation when they were 6-0, he has been the same yeah, young steady. man when they went through the five-game losing streak. Yeah, and it was a lot of anxiety getting that sixth win last week against Iowa State. And, Brian, I would imagine that is a lot of pressure because they had to score 70 yes. to beat Baylor because right. Baylor got 63. So it seems like pressure well, every single game because when, you must score at least 40. And, look, when they beat Texas to go 5-0, and you know, on that Saturday night on our air, and, you know, at that point, 5-0 and and 24 touchdown passes, not an interception. I mean, he was clearly the front runner to walk away with the Heisman Trophy. His year is 40 touchdown passes, only six interceptions. Millard trying to escape, then wings it to his right and throws it away. He has had a rough time. And this is a young man they believe in. I saw his first throw, one of his throws this year against Oklahoma State. He came in with Geno Smith's helmet got torn off. He had to come in for a play. The first play he comes in, Touchdown pass. 37 yards to Stedman yeah, Bailey. Right on, right on cue. And this is West Virginia's first punt of the game. It comes with one minute 
and 46 seconds left in the game. He'll get the 3 and D1 oil on his leg, too. <laughs> Keep that warmed up. <laughs> and that will be a delay of game penalty. Delay of game. Delay game. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. West Virginia has now scored 499 points this year. Nice round number. And West Virginia with a complete game, including special teams tonight against Kansas. And fans, a special thanks for a great season from our hard-working crew led by technical producer Mark Allsmeyer and technical director Kevin Lewis, and AD Doug Foster, graphics Larry Rosina, Leo Hockmeyer and Danny Martinez in tape, Nathan Beck and Troy Winter, audio Scott McDonald and John Hooper, Tony Angelis on camera with Steve Brown, Marcus Chase, Dwayne Collins, Rusty Stebbing and Rich White, our producer today, Eric Bildmeyer, and also our director, Phil Mulligan Malika. <laughs> Stats by Mike Swanson and our spotter, Ralph Sauceda, today. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, great college football on Fox. Hey, we are a team as well, and we can't do it with the team effort. Uh, and we've had a great season. It's been a lot of fun. Steve Fiziak today with Brian Baldinger and Jim Knox on the field. It's the clock winding down, 1.15 to go. It has been a difficult first season for Charlie Weiss and Lawrence. They will finish the year 1-11. and 11. Their one victory was game one over South Dakota State, 31-17. Then the next week, they lost to Rice by one point. And all downhill after that. But there's Tanner Hawkinson, 48 starts, a KU record. From the day he walked on campus, Lawrence, Kansas, as an 18-year-old freshman, he lined up, put the number 72 on, has been starting every single game since. He's and been the example, you know, just what it's like to be a pro. And Charlie recognizes it, giving him a lot of uh, accolades this year. Uh, there's something about somebody that just shows up every single week, you know, puts a hand on the ground and fires off and plays football. It's great. School record of 48 straight starts. Brandon Bourbon with a short gain up past midfield. They may get one more play, and that will be it, as West Virginia will push the record to 7-5, and they are bowl eligible one more time. They became bowl eligible last week for the 11th straight year, and they're 5-5 five and five in their previous 10, and that young man, Geno Smith, tore up Clemson last year in the Orange Bowl throwing for 407 yards and six touchdowns. Matthews taken down, and that will be the final play of the game. Unless there is a penalty flag thrown. Well, stop on change of downs yeah. here. Exactly. So we'll have one more snap going to the knee. That is about the seniors, about the 21 seniors that put the uniform on for the final time here. <laughs> he just got... The only thing that Taven Austin couldn't get out of the way of all day was the Gatorade bucket. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of 21 got... seniors playing their last game in Morgantown today. Great crowd on hand. They couldn't tackle him, but they held him see, for this set moment. Up. Set up. You see the week? He was set up by Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go now on the field to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Steve. Gino, congratulations. I talked to you before the game. You said you wanted to leave a legacy here. Today, an outstanding senior performance. Your last game in Morgantown, 407 yards, a team record, 21 straight completions. What was going through your mind in your last game here in Morgantown? 
you know what, I just wanted to come out and execute and, um, you know, leave out on a high note and, and get this team a victory. Um, I, I have, uh, you know, 22 seniors alongside me who deserve it, and uh, we all wanted to, uh, you know, just send ourselves out on a high note, and I think we did that tonight. How about playing with uh, another senior, a fine senior, went out in grand fashion, that's Tavon Austin. Oh, man, he's amazing. He's um, the most electrifying player in college football right now, and, um, you know, just to have a guy like that on my side is just a blessing, and, um, you know, uh, it's going to hurt next year when I'm not wearing the same color as that guy, so, you know, I just, I appreciate, um, you know, just being here for four years with him and, um, you know, just going through every day with him. All right, Gino, congratulations. Appreciate it, and best of luck in the bowl game. Steve? Jim, thank you very much. What a performance by Geno Smith. 23 for 24, 407 yards, including a school record, 21 consecutive passes. Many going to that young man, Tavon Austin, and we enjoyed being in Morgantown today. I was excited about the assignment. I was enjoyed the preparation, and then watching these great players play today, Steve, I was electrified. As much as those players did that to Kansas today, they've been doing it for four years here. It's disappointing for Kansas. No conference wins. They line up and play hard every week. West Virginia just has better talent. It's just all comes down to right now. Well, Noxie's with uh, one of the most exciting guys in college football. All right, here he is, Tavon Austin. And the only thing you didn't get away from today was the Gatorade dunk, but you got a little, little wet there. What was going through your mind, Tavon, your final game here in Mo Morgantown and the electrifying performance you put on? Oh, man, the one thing that was that came to my mind was just getting the win. You know, for my 21 singers, and we just came out on top. And uh, I'm just glad everybody healthy, and we, and we came out with the win. Yeah. At halftime, you went up to Dana Holgerson, your head coach, and you told him, hey, I haven't gotten in the end zone yet, but I'm going to get in the second half. You got in the end zone, scored a touchdown, and then you performed the Heisman pose. Are you trying to send a message here? I mean, I definitely try to send a message. You know, I'm a very humble person, but at the same time, I think I deserve to be in the talk. I agree with you, and so does a few other people I know around the nation. Well, congratulations on an outstanding performance, an outstanding senior year, and best of luck in the bowl game. Appreciate sure. it. Thank you. Steve? Jim, they put on a show, particularly that young man, Geno Smith, who has gone to the stands to celebrate with all Mountaineers here in Morgantown. Looks like Tavon may be joining. <laughs> yeah, he might just jump up there. <laughs> I think he could take the leap. We love college football for moments like this. That's a great shot. to Austin and Bailey and uh, so many more. Coming up next, we'll send it back to Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen in our college football studio right after these messages.